that was good timing, that hymn finished at exactly half past ten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> good morning and a very warm welcome to worship <laughs> and to our piano, which has just woken up in the corner, which is great. A very warm welcome to worship. What a beautiful day it is. Isn't it lovely? And so we'll start by remaining seated to mm -hmm. sing together Abba Father. <coughs> Are there any other notices that anybody 
any notices? Big Church Clean. Big Church Clean? Is on May the 10th, 11th, whatever the Saturday is. Yes, Big Church Clean on May the, I think it was the 11th. Yes. Thank you for that. I, I knew there'd be something and I didn't write it down. I'm sorry. So that's all right. That's great. So anybody else got anything they want to say? <laughs> no, that's good. Lovely. So our themes today are around uh, Christ the Cornerstone and the Good Shepherd. So we are going to stand now and sing together the King of Love, my Shepherd. Our cornerstone, 
We can navigate the troubles of the world, not avoiding them, but making sense of them and doing all we can to make lives better. We give thanks that our faith in you steadies us when we are surrounded by false truths, greedy ways, or power-grabbing leaders who don't think of others. For your promises and firm foundation, we give you heartfelt thanks. Amen. Now we'll have our first reading. I'm not sure who's doing the first one. It's Marnie. Thank you, Marnie. From the New International Version, John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd laid, lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not owe the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares <coughs> nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. And this is the word of the Lord. heart. <coughs> We're going to stand now and sing together the Stuart Town End 23rd Song. <coughs> Yeah. 
second reading is taken from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. <clears throat> the next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Ca Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rul Rulers and elders of the people, if, I am, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And this is the word of God. One of excuse me, the vital signs of the living Christ with us here is whether this body, whether this fellowship is seeking unity with other members, other traditions, and other families of God. Because our Lord prayed for it, because it was so evident in his earthly ministry, and because it is the very heart of the gospel, we know a vital sign the living Christ is really proactively seeking after unity. It's the very nature of a, an alive group of disciples. It's a beautiful sight, the shepherd gathering his sheep into the sheepfold. It's, it's a, a, a wonderful thing to watch. In the Middle East, shepherds own a sheepfold in, in common. They actually share them. And it's usually constructed of a, a stone wall in a circle. You, you saw an image a little bit earlier on, actually. A stone wall in a circle, and then they put brambles on top to keep anything from climbing over the, the wall. One side, there's an opening where the sheep and goats from different flocks enter and leave. And later in the evening, the shepherds build a fire close to that opening and they lie right down in the opening and use their bodies, as it were, as a door to the, to the sheepfold. In the morning, you can see those same shepherds riding donkeys through the fields and they play on bamboo pipes. It's quite an eerie sound, actually. They play on bamboo pipes. And the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. And they follow him out into the pastures for the day. It's, 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 it's wonderful. It's an amazing sight. Jesus tells this story, and we use the imagery in talking about the good shepherd. We talk about God as our shepherd, and that we will never have any want, as it's expressed in the 23rd Psalm. Shepherds and sheepfolds are not such a big part of, of our lives today, although they do still exist. And of course, the, the retreat house Falderbrennen means sheepfold of the king, where many of you have, have been. But there is one flock, there is one shepherd. Jesus says, one shepherd, one flock. He doesn't say, one fold. <coughs> one of the hardest things to unlearn 
for us is exclusiveness. Once <clears throat> people, a group of people, get the idea that they're different from other people, that they're somehow special, it's difficult for them to realise that the privileges which they believe belong just to them are actually privileges available to others too. Paul wrote to his church at Ephesus, we are no longer strangers. Christ has broken down the walls that separate us. When will we learn? Jesus said there's only one shepherd and one flock, but many flocks. And let's say it now, there are many denominations within church. And they do have variations. There are many organizations of Christians. And I'm not saying for a moment that any one of them is more legitimate than others. So we have Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Christian, United Reformed, Anglican, Lutheran, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Quaker, Roman Catholic, it goes on and on. But those are man-made. They weren't given to us by Jesus. Jesus prayed for his disciples in John 17. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world, and for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth that they may all be one. Yet, it is true that five orders of Christians fight over the top of Calvary in Jerusalem to decide who will maintain the building. They fight over which group gets to worship in the Church of the Holy Sacrament. They fight in that part of the world over so many things. I would go so far as to suggest that our separation in the family of God is a scandal. It's not what was intended. It's not what's most helpful to Christianity and to God. It can't be, surely. We need to know that genuine disciples of Jesus believe that all denominations belong to the same flock. They may see things in slightly different ways, and that's fine. And we show love in different ways. We reach out in different ways. That doesn't make one right and one wrong. <coughs> We're all God's people. Lloyd George once remarked, the church I belong to is torn in a fierce dispute. One section says baptism is in the name of the Father, and the other that it is into the name of the Father. I belong to one of these parties. I feel most strongly about it. I would die for it. But I forget which it is. <laughs> All religion, worship, are a response to a victory already won for us. Over ourselves, over sin, over death, over fear, over loneliness, it's already done. One family of God may seem sentimental, if you like, experienced, experience-centred hymns. Another may use Latin and light candles and bow and scrape a bit more. Others may wave their hands and speak in tongues. Some may use classical music. Some may use pop music. It's not a matter of one being wrong and one being right. That's not what it's about. And you know what? an ecumenist I am, you know, I mean, that's, it's not about one being right and one wrong. 
It's not a matter of one being God's family and all the rest not. Of course it's not. These are God's people in their own ways celebrating the Easter victory together in a way that sits well for them. And that helps them help each other and it helps them relate to God. We can't base our religion on just what we are against. The Old Testament had a lot of shout nots in it. The New Testament talks more about blessed are they. There is still something in some places of a, a stigma based back on a bitter fight in the church in the 16th century so that Protestants in some places still carry the stigma of somehow being Catholic haters. How foolish and shallow that is. That's not discipleship. I think there's more difference in theological beliefs between members of one congregation because of their refusal to study scripture and to deepen their spiritual lives than there is between official beliefs of different denominations. I may be being a bit controversial here, but it's what I believe. What one of us can claim that we live the life of a disciple so correctly that only the way we do it is right. If we base our faith only on negatives, on the things that we're against, when we need positive content to actually see us through, then we don't have anything. When we lose a loved one, or go through a divorce, or lose a job, or whatever, it doesn't help to be against another denomination. What helps is to be able to reach out in love with people who share the faith. That's what's important. And there's comfort and companionship in that, regardless of the labels. Regardless of the labels. We must all be aware of basing our faith on a person or a church building or a denomination. Buildings can be sold relocated, burned down, fall down. So actually that's an unhelpful way to base our, our, our faith. Preachers come and go. People make mistakes. Denominations merge, as we know only too well. Some go bankrupt, and God works through them in different ways. Some may be more effective than others, but then so are members. The early Christians gathered in a, a cave or a house. They gathered in one person's house and then maybe another one. I mean, Wesley famously did a lot of his preaching in a field, regardless of the weather. And people stood there, getting wet, presumably. The risen Christ, though, was with them all regardless of where they were located. They were with each other wherever that was. Paul was pretty itinerant. He seldom stayed more than a few months anywhere. And we know he travelled quite widely, uh, given that there were no cars and things like that then. When we moved to new communities, the greatest compliment we can pay our home church is to transfer into a new congregation of God's people. Because we need that community. We need that community. 
And there are many, many stories of, 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 of people of, of people moving and making a huge difference to the new church that they that they attend. Many stories. Now Johnny said the teacher, if there were eleven sheep in a field and six jumped over the fence, how many would there be left? None, replied Johnny. Why, yes, there would, said the teacher. No, there wouldn't, persisted Johnny. You may know arithmetic, but you don't know sheep. <laughs> <laughs> sheep belong together, and we know they, they, do, they do stay together. They, they do, you know, they do uh, follow one another and stick together. A little Johnny knew it. All sorts of disciples saw Jesus between Easter and Ascension, in all kinds of places. On the Emmaus Road, in the Upper Room, in a garden, by Lake Galilee, all sorts of people, worshipping in different ways, still know his presence. We need to extend our hands to all God's families. If there is any suspicion, let not it be from our side. Let's not have that hanging over us. When we're baptised, we're adopted into a great fellowship, the communion or fellowship of saints. People are not baptised, Lutherans or Methodists or Baptists or whatever. We're baptised Christians. We're baptised into the Christian flock and we have Christ as our shepherd. And I take great heart in the fact that we're baptised into God's fellowship. Whether that's while we're an infant or as an adult, it doesn't matter. One baptism, once for all. We need to beware of Christians who claim a monopoly on heaven. Beware of basing our Christian faith on a person or a building rather than on Christ. We mustn't base our religion on just what we are against. We have one shepherd, one flock, and we rejoice in the many folds. I will sing the wondrous story. Oh. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for the rapidly changing situation in the Middle East. We pray for the United Nations as it seeks to foster the values enshrined in its Charter of Peace, justice, respect, human rights, tolerance and solidarity. We ask that the leaders of the nations of the Middle East will seek harmony and lasting peace. We pray for those who work in justice systems throughout the world. Be especially close to those who work in Sydney as they cope with the aftermath of the appalling attacks in a shopping mall and church. We ask that those who strive to keep others safe and those who administer justice may be strengthened and supported. We pray for all people in hospital. We hold before you those awaiting appointments, tests or results. And we pray for their families and friends and all those who are worried for them. We give thanks for all those who work in healing and caring professions. We pray that policy makers and administrators might make decisions in imaginative and innovative ways to the greater good of everyone. We pray for Christian leaders that they may follow Jesus' example. And finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Help us to be aware that our conduct can make a difference. Our words and actions can bring about change. Help us to be inspired, to seek to serve rather than be served, and to be bold, challenging the status quo when it needs to be challenged. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who <coughs> art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
God, our Heavenly Father, send us out in the power of your Spirit to build on the cornerstone of our faith, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen.